right, so if you click this video, chances are you want to know how to install Air Ride onto your car, or you want to know the pros, the cons, what to look for, everything. And that's what this video is going to be. It's going to be basic educational video for the people that are curious what do you have to do or what to look out for when you do Air Ride. Now, this is already done, as you can see, but I want to go over some of the trials and tribulations that I went through so you might not actually have to do it and it'll make your life a lot simpler. So if this is your first time to the channel, what's up? My name is Preston. I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. You know, I'm the guy that gets dislikes before they even watch the video. See, now that's some bullshit. I know Samuel L. Jackson. I know. But as you guys can see right here, this is my 1995 Honda Civic Sedan and it is on a full air ride airlift kit from Bag Riders and it's pretty simple. Not really that hard, but there are a couple things that you need to know if you're thinking about picking up this kit. Now I'm just gonna go off my personal experience. I'm not gonna talk about other kits and get into too much of stuff that I don't really personally know, but I am gonna go over the airlift kit that you buy from Bag Riders if you decide you wanna do the same as me. So let's go over it, but let's go find somewhere to sit down and get out of the sun and away from the wind. All right, now that we're in my house and I'm finally out of the heat and there's no more wind, we can properly go over everything. So I bought the airlift kit off Bag Riders and it is a manual kit, meaning that it is pretty much a manual gauge instead of an actual air management, if that makes any sense. And let's just say there was a lot of trials and tribulations it wasn't as easy as i thought it was when i first bought it all right so my biggest complaint with these air struts is that they're not adjustable i didn't really realize that when i was buying the kit because i was so gung-ho over it being airlift so that's something you guys might want to consider with going with true heart or d2 somebody that has a spindle on the bottom or the top where you can make it smaller or shorter. Now, if you do wanna buy these struts, there are ways around it, and that's another thing I'm gonna go over right now. So when you buy the struts, they're not gonna have any top hats on them. They're gonna be bare, and you're gonna be like, where are my top hats? Well, they do that, so say if you're on stock suspension or aftermarket coilovers, you could take those top hats and put it on the airlift. Say you have OEM struts, you could take the top hats off that and put it on there and vice versa, you know what I mean? So my coilovers were True Hearts and I had the True Hearts top hats. And they're like, they're practically two inches thick. They're very thick. And the issue that I'm having personally with my struts is they're too tall. So I can't go as low as I want, but I can go super high in the air. I'm still as low as I was static, if not a little bit lower, but I can go super high up. So it's not that big of a deal, but I wanna go lower. So what I'm gonna do, and I have a buddy that's actually gonna buy my coilovers, is I'm gonna switch out the top hats. And that's something you guys can do, and I will put that on another video. So I'm gonna take EG struts, and I'm gonna take the top hats off that and throw those on my airlift struts. That'll give me about an inch and a half lower all the way around just off that. Now, the only modification you're gonna have to do to the OEM top hats is you're gonna have to notch them, cut a hole through them so your air fitting can go through it. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to use them. But that's not really that hard, but that's something you wanna have to do if you get these struts and you wanna go lower. I'm a Civic, so the 16's really as high as you can go. I mean, some people do 17's and stuff, but I don't know right now if I'm gonna do that. So for a 16, I can't get any lower until I change those top hats. But it's not really that big of a deal because all I have to do is just change the top hats, cut a little hole in them, and I'm dropping an inch and a half all the way around. You're gonna need spacers if you have a wheel that's wider than the eight. I run 16 by nines from Clutch, and I was super close to the bags in the rear. So when I air up, air down, it didn't matter. The gap was so small that I was scared I was gonna rub a bag. But what's pretty cool is after I took the wheels off, I went to Hub Centric on uh, Amazon, bought the Hub Centric three mils, put those on the back, and I was able to get a lot more clearance. But what's cool is when I took the wheel off, it didn't have any marks on the bag anyway. So I would have been good either way, but just to be safe, if you're running a wide wheel, it's probably better to go on Amazon or eBay, go to Hubcentric 3 mils and buy you some 4 by 100s just in case if you have some fitment issues because it was kind of scary driving to work and doing stuff and knowing that I could possibly, uh, possibly pop a bag. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, yo, you don't want to pop a bag. That's the worst thing. You don't want to have a leak and you don't want to pop a bag. That's the two biggest things with airlift 
or any air ride system. That's what you just don't want to have when you're on bags. Another thing is you're going to have to shave down your spindle arms. So the spindle arms that come stock on your car are going to, especially these older cars, they're going to have a lot of material, a lot of rust, a lot of, it's just not, it's not fine. It's not smooth. You know what I mean? So it's really annoying and can be very extra costly if you don't shave them down. Now, my last video, I'll link it here somewhere. You can watch it. I actually show you how I did it and what it looks like, but you're just going to get a floppy disk from Harvard Freight, anywhere you really want to go, Home Depot, Lowe's, it don't matter. And you're just going to sand down that spindle arm. And what it's going to do is it's going to make it real smooth and take a little bit of the material off. So then when you air out and your, your spindle arms start to go like this, you know what I mean? If they do touch, which you don't want, make sure they're not touching. Keep sanding down until they don't touch. But if somehow they ever do, they're rubbing on something really smooth. You know what I mean? So when I sanded it down, I just put a little bit of paint on it so it wouldn't rust. Real simple. It didn't take long at all to do. But that's something you're going to have to do no matter what with these. Unless you're running a super, super skinny wheel, maybe you can get away with it. But chances are, if you're bagging your car, you're going to go with a wider wheel. Why wouldn't you? So just make sure to shave down those spindle arms. Another thing about this kit, which I didn't really like, but now I can kind of understand, and it's really your preference. So if you go with Viera, True Heart, D2, a lot of these companies, they make it where you only run four lines, individual line to each one, each strut, and that's four. It goes right back into the little manual gauge, and pretty much one button lifts up the front, one button lifts up the back, and vice versa, you want to air out. But with Airlift, they send you four panel switches and two gauges, and they want you to run a line, like, I think they want you to run pretty much eight lines. Instead of four, eight lines. So every strut has its own individual air source to go up and down. So when you're airing up, you're pressing two buttons for the front instead of one. You get what I'm saying? Vice versa for the back. So we try to do some hood stuff and kind of bypass that and make it so you could just run two two buttons, you know what I mean? Because I didn't really have the room and I didn't want to do it. But I ended up having this issue with my car that now it, it tilts. So when I air all the way out, it like goes back to normal. But say if I'm airing up, this is what'll happen. It'll go boo, and then it'll start to do this. And it'll just tilt up, it looks retarded. But what I found out after I put the spacers on and aired it completely up, if you air all the way up, it'll straighten back up. When you air all the way down, it'll straighten back up. But in the middle, it's like crooked. You know what I mean? Because one bag's not getting enough air to the other one. So one bag is getting more air, the other one's not getting enough, and it's doing the seesaw looking thing where it starts to tilt. So that's a big issue. So what we're gonna probably end up doing is running four panel switches, and then I'm just gonna get a pillar pod gauge, which I'll show you all this stuff if I end up doing it, and running the two gauges there so it still looks clean, and that's just kind of what I have to do. But now that I have the spacers on, when I air all the way up, I have so much good clearance, I might just drive like a monster truck all the time. And when I air out, I air out. When I get the top hats, I will be able to go lower. So I won't be so high in the air, you know what I mean? But for now, I will look like a monster truck. It'll look kind of dumb when I drive, but let me tell you something. The airlift kit is really good because when you're aired up, it drives like a stock car. It drives really smooth, really soft. It has the dampening. I have it set all the way to stiff right now. I'm probably going to loosen it. You know what I mean? Let it go a little easier. But that's just something you guys have to understand that without those top hats, you're going to be really high in the air and you're only going to be able to get so low. The fittings they give you aren't that good. So they give you this little brochure of, and a manual how to use it. Like, how to install it step by step. And in the picture, they got these fittings where it goes through, you drill a hole through your shock tower and it goes straight. Well, they gave me these elbow ones and I'm gonna slide a picture in. They gave me these elbows. These elbows are horrible. They're plastic, so they can easily get destroyed and you can't really have no clearance. So what happened? We had to flip it around and cut a bigger hole to make the fronts work, which looks like shit, but whatever. And the fronts are okay. They're good. What happens with the rear? I couldn't, we couldn't flip the coil. We couldn't flip the air strut around and drill a hole through that and then put them in there. It was no way to do it. There wasn't no clearance. It was horrible. It was just, it was impossible. 
So what happened was we had to flip it around and have it facing the wheel. Well, I'm sure you could probably think what happened next. I burnt through it. Had an air leak, still testing everything. I'm making sure I'm aired up super high because I don't want my bag to rub. And I rubbed the, both fittings out and literally burn them out, have an air leak. So what I did and what you should do is they got like truck stops that sell fittings. And what you should do is go buy some like steel aluminum style ones that are straight. They're, they're, they're kind of expensive. They're like $15 to $30 a fitting. They are expensive, but they're way stronger, way more durable. And what we did was able to flip it and drill a hole so it went straight through and I could run my line. So now I'll never have to worry about that. I haven't had any air leaks. I haven't had any issues since we changed out the fitting. So fittings are a big thing. You might want to go somewhere and get some better fittings. So my overall review with the airlift kit from Bag Riders, I think it's awesome. It is a great kit. It's just better to run those four individual switches so each one gets its own line. And other than that, if you just change the fittings, change the top hats, shave down the spindle arms, and cut your strut towers, it's a great kit. And I know that seems like a lot of stuff, guys and girls. I know it's, I know, I know. But it's not that big of a deal. And in my opinion, they still ride a lot better than the True Hearts. Would I have went and just did the True Hearts at this point? Yes, I would have. I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give me a like on this video. Comment any thoughts. If there's something I left out that you guys might want to know, comment down below. I'll try to answer your question as fast as I can. And like I said, overall, Bag Riders had great customer service. The kit's great. And just change those fittings and top hats and you'll be able to go super low ride smooth and enjoy yourself so till next time peace